Leviathan, as described in the Old Testament portion of the Bible, is a sea creature that fears no one but is feared by everyone. The name is derived from the Hebrew word Leviathan. It's one of many creatures mentioned in the Bible. A Leviathan is a waterborne serpent created by God that is also considered a monster. According to the Institute for Creation Research, Leviathan has also been described as mammal, and based on some translation of the text, many have been compared to a crocodile. Many people thought it was a dinosaur, but that theory has long been debunked. According to the creature's description, it is described as large, with large teeth, the ability to shoot flames from its mouth, and scaly skins. Most people think of the Leviathan as a large fish, a whale if you will, because it lives in the sea. However, it is a truly terrifying aquatic creature. Leviathan is described as practically unconquerable in Job 41, which describes how it appears. Leviathan is said to be extremely powerful and well protected with a chest hard as rock and the ability to treat iron like straw. The Leviathan is mentioned four times in the Bible. According to the Bible story, it is mentioned for the first time in Job 41, but it is mentioned three more times. Leviathan is referred to as a serpent. God descends with a sword in hand intending to kill Leviathan. God descends to earth in Psalm 74 verse 14 and kills the Leviathan. Described as having two heads, the creature remains are also left to be fed on. It was you who crushed the Leviathan's head and gave it as food to the creatures of the desert. Psalm 74 says, Psalm 104 verse 26 on the other hand is a little more straightforward. It only says that the Leviathan was created by God to enjoy and play in the ocean where it lives. The final verse confirms that Leviathan is a creation of God, though its mere existence is intended to frighten. In Job 41, readers discover that not only is Leviathan a terrifying being that cannot be killed by man, and it shares many characteristics with whales, crocodiles, and mythical travans. But it is debatable whether Leviathan is real or not. No evidence can confirm this yet. The fact that Job was unable to defeat Leviathan is not lost on anyone. He is not only not strong enough, but neither he nor any other man has the strength to overcome it. And they weren't supposed to be. Only God has power to destroy Leviathan. Even though he assigned Job the task to subdue it, he knew it was an impossible task. According to one interpretation, Leviathan represents God's power over man. According to compelling truth, God employs the creature to demonstrate his power and authority. God also demonstrates that despite all of the Leviathan's adjectives for fear, it too had God to answer to, implying that nothing on earth is more powerful than God. Even a creature with powers greater than man could not stand against God. Job 41 goes on to say that God has the power to subjugate Leviathan to his servants and suppress it to the point where it will speak gently to him. Job is humbled by the ordeal and his inability to tame the creature demonstrates a moral about pride and not questioning the creator. Let's do a quick recap before we get started in Isaiah 1-12. to We read about a divided kingdom seeking worldly security from the nations. God is glorified in salvation and judgment and we have seen how our world remains in geographical turmoil. We can read about how Isaiah addressed the nations in Isaiah 13-23 in the forms of oracles about the rise of Assyria and Babylon. God reveals a sovereign plan for human history. Isaiah 24 verse 27 speaks of the little apocalypse where Isaiah speaks of the day of the Lord. In this series, Isaiah 24 verse 23, the phrase in that day begins with Isaiah 27 verse 1, the day of judgment is approaching. Isaiah also employs a three-part formula to describe the Leviathan, fleeing serpent, twisting serpent, and the dragon in the sea. In this imagery, Leviathan is a serpent. The cunning serpent is introduced in Genesis 3 verse 1. This is the first time as an animal has been introduced. This serpent also has a personality. The serpent is cursed according to Genesis 3 verse 14. In Job 3 verse 8, associates his birthday 
throughout the world. He stopped the sea and shattered Rehab, Egypt, with his power. Now, how does the sea function in the Bible? The sea is associated with death and judgment in the Bible. When the earth was formless and void, we saw the spirits hovering over the water in Genesis 1. As a result, the sea represents chaos, destruction, disorder, and death. This makes sense from the Israel perspective because the country is landlocked. The sea is inherently wild, chaotic, and unpredictable. It has the potential for great wealth, but it also has the potential for great destruction. While writing Revelation 13 verse 1, John drew from Daniel 7 verse 3. These are the sea's symbolic forces of death, destruction, chaos, and rebellion. This is with the rousing of the Leviathan as a result. Leviathan is no ordinary creature. It represents spiritual unrest, rebellion, death, and misery. Notice how it talks about chaos and evil. This is why, when God has made all things new in the new heaven and new earth, there will be no more sea. Thus, when Isaiah writes in Isaiah 27 verse 1 about how on that day he will deal decisively with the Leviathan in the sea, he is referring to all that is evil, chaotic, and opposes God. All of this will be dealt with decisively by God. Is there a category for Leviathan? We recognize our sins, but do we believe that our sins are causing the world to fall apart? Our sin's condition is a problem, and we sin because we are sinners. We have earned God's wrath. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However, we are a part of a larger world, and the sum of our sins destroying it. Is there a category for the brokenness that goes beyond my personal sin? If we lack this awareness, Jesus' death becomes my personal savior. We hope that Jesus will forgive our sins and that we will be able to leave this broken world. Our struggle is with our flesh and with the world. The Levitan represents everything. Why do you need a Levitan category? We must understand that God will not simply build us out of trouble. He is working harder. He is remaking everything. What else does the Bible say about the Levitan? Isaiah makes the connection between Rehab and Egypt in Isaiah 30 verse 7. God will judge not only the Egyptians and their ruler, but also all the gods of Egypt. According to Exodus 12 verse 12, the Nile is strongly associated with the Egyptian understanding of their own power base. And the symbol is a serpent, but in this case, we must recognize that this is not only the serpent, but also the Leviathan. We draw inspiration from what Isaiah does. Isaiah describes how God destroys the Egyptian power structure. In Job 41, the Lord asks Job a series of rhetorical questions, including whether he can deal with the Leviathan as well as the Lord. The description provided here is not intended to inspire us to imagine and draw it out. This is a creature of immense power and force. It is an untamable beast. And if we stood before it, we would tremble. As a result, it represents more than just a large fish. What does Isaiah mean in Isaiah 27 verse 1? God will deal with every last spiritual opposition and crush it. Leviathan primarily represents the spiritual conflict between the world and the devil. This is not just an Old Testament concept. Turn to 1 Peter to hear the apostle had felt concern. Peter wants the people to be alert and cautious. We are urged to be vigilant. What is the danger? Paul emphasized that we are engaged in a spiritual battle. Many of us may be aware or unaware of the war. Have you ever considered that your Christian life is far more complicated than your sin, struggle, and waiting to enter heaven? Perhaps we are dealing with something far more complicated. Why else would we need to be sober? Do you realize we have a foe? Do we know what his objective, goals, and plans are?